So learning to code is hard. I've been through it and when I started to code, it was a long road. When you start to learn to code, it's almost like an information overload. There's a lot of decisions that you have to make early on in your learning journey and you may not know what exactly is the right decision. Now there is no right or wrong decision, but often, especially when you're starting out to learn to code, you don't know what to do. But today, my friends, we are going to learn to code in 15 minutes using Python. We've got a limited time, so let's just get to it. So what we're gonna do is we are going to learn how to work with variables, perform mathematical operations on Python, perform mathematical operations on data frames on Python using pandas, and then creating some graphs. Now this will not make you an expert at coding, but it will give you a nice start and a bit of background to Python, and you will learn to code. Okay, so before we actually get started on coding, we do need a few things. So. In order to code, you need a programming language. I have chosen a programming language for you, it's Python. Simply because Python's popular, it's diverse, it's a good skill to have on your resume, and there's a lot of online content, but we're doing Python. Now, we need an IDE, which is an integrated development environment. Every time when you code, you do need an IDE. It's just a fancy platform where you'll do all your coding, you can see what you're doing and whether you're getting any errors, etc. So we're going to be using Anaconda. Anaconda is an open source distribution. It's for Python and R and it's used mostly in the data science community. Now I like using Anaconda because especially if you're a beginner, it does all the Python installation for you as well as packages that you may need. And Anaconda has an IDE called Spider and that's what we'll be using to code. And that's it. So let's quickly download anaconda.com. I'll show you how, and then we are going to start coding. So download Anaconda and install it in your computer and open it. So when you open up Anaconda Navigator, this is what you'll see. Now, Anaconda does have quite a few applications. These include IDEs for R or Python, but we are going to use Spider. So I'll click on Spider. Now it should take a few seconds to launch. Okay, so when you open up Spider, this is what you'll see. And it's actually quite a simple interface. So this here is where we will be writing all our code. And on the top bar here, this is where you create a new file, where you can open a file and save a file. Now the two important buttons you need to know is this is how you run your file. So when I say file, I mean the script. And then this is where you just run maybe a certain line on a script, or if you select specific lines, you can click this and it will just run specific lines. The other thing to note is that Python works by file directories. So as you can see here, I am on my desktop. And if you are not on your desktop, I want you to navigate so that you can see the file path that is your desktop. To do that, click on this file icon here or this folder icon here and then just make sure it's on desktop and click open, perfect. So what we're gonna do in our project here is that we are going to read an Excel file and we're gonna do some basic transformations and then create a graph. Okay, so I want you to head on over to this link here. It will also be in the description bar below and download that data set. It's just a simple Excel data set. The data set is just a company that buys various office supplies. Okay, so once you download that data set, I want you to add that data set to a folder on your desktop. Okay, so I'm creating a new folder on my desktop and I'm calling it Python tutorial. And then in this folder, I'm just gonna add my Python data set that I've downloaded. Once you do that, go back to Spider. Okay, we're back on Spider, and now what we're gonna do is navigate to that specific folder. So click on this folder, and click on Python tutorial, and click open. Now what I like to do is to make sure that I'm in the correct folder, I go to this section here, and I go to files. And if you click on files, it will show you what's in the folder. Okay, well, that's enough theory. Let's start coding. So what we're gonna do is we're going to play around a bit, and I'll show you how exactly you can write code. So with Python to write code, you just write it on this interface of this window here. So let's just do one plus one. And let's run that. So you can select this line and let's run it. Okay, and now we can see our output is two. So whenever we run a script, our output will show up in this console here. You can also store variables on Python. So if we say something like a equals one, and let's run that. I want you to go to Variable Explorer. 
Okay, and then Python will show you, hey, we created a variable called a. It's an integer, so it tells you the data type. It tells you the size, so basically length of characters in this case, and it's saying the value, which is one. So if we do something like d equals 39, and let's run that. Okay, we have the same thing popping up. So to do mathematical operations, you know, with your variables, you can do something like c equals 40 plus 20. And let's run that. Okay, and we can see c equals 60. We can also do multiplication and divide. So d equals 10. The star is multiplication. So 10 times 2. And let's do another one. Let's do e is equal to 100 slash, which is divide by 10. Okay, and then let's just run the whole script. So click on the green arrow to run the whole script. Awesome. So now we can see d is 20, which is correct. That's 10 times 2. And e is 10. You can also use a variable in another variable. So if we say if is equal to e times 3, that should be 30. Because remember, e is 10, and 10 times 3 is 30. So let's just click run. So I'm just selecting line 17, and I'm clicking run. OK, we can see f is 30. Now, if you want to add comments, you can. So comment is basically anything that you want to note, and it doesn't affect the script. So to write comments, all you say is a hashtag, and then you comment. So this is a variable. Now, how do you work with characters and variables? So when you work with characters or a bunch of strings or a bunch of letters, you just need to put them in quotation marks. So for example, here we can say name is equal to quotation marks and your name. And if you run that, okay, then we can see name, that's a string type, three characters and D. If I say name is equal to D without quotation marks, it won't run. It will give me an error. And then if we say something like surname equals Naidu and run that, it will pop up. Now you can also combine names. So if we say something like full name is equal to name plus surname, let's see what that does. Okay, and we can see full name is D Naidu. There's no space there. So if we do want a space, we can put a space in surname and click run. Okay, so that's just a bit of background. Now, what do we want to do if we want to read data? So I want to read that Excel file that we downloaded. What exactly do we do? So whenever you want to read an Excel file, Python actually has this useful package called pandas. It's quite popular and it deals with data frames. And when I mean data frames, it's just called tables. Now packages just means it's predefined scripts, it consists of algorithms, useful functions, etc. For example, read Excel in pandas is a function that reads Excel files from your computer. So we are going to be using that. But whenever you want to use a package, you have to tell Python that you're using this package. And that's called importing packages or even libraries. So let's import pandas. So usually when you import pandas, you do it at the top of your script. And we're going to say import pandas as pd. Coders are generally quite lazy and often we like abbreviations. Now usually sometimes when you import packages that are not default on Anaconda, you'll probably have to install it. So to install a package, you just say pip install on your console and whatever the package is for pandas. All right, and you can see Anaconda usually already installs pandas for you, so you don't need to do anything. But before you use a package, if you are using it for the first time, you can install it here. Perfect. So let's just run this. So I just select that line and run it. And now we have pandas. So now we need to read the Excel file. And the first thing we need to do is always make sure we are in the correct file directory. So where is our Excel file? My Excel file is under Python tutorial and click open. Right, so there it is. And now let's comment here and say reading an Excel file. And to read it, we're going to name a variable. So let's just call it Excel data is equal to. Now remember, we're using read Excel from pandas and pandas is now referred to PD in our script. So we're going to say PD dot and the function is called read Excel. 
open brackets and this is where you need to put your file name so make sure your file name is exactly the same as what's in your python tutorial folder and always put it in quotation marks it's called python plus data plus set dot x l s x okay and let's run it awesome so it ran there's no errors let's check out a variable explorer okay perfect we can see it shows up here it's a data frame whenever we see data frame just think table and this tells us how many rows and columns so 43 rows six columns if you actually double click it it will give you the data okay so this is just an order date the region the rep what item was bought how many items are bought and then the cost per item you can click close okay and then if you want to do something like you know maybe get a summary of the data but you don't want to add it to your script you just want to have a look at it in the moment you can do something like excel data so remember excel data is our variable is our data frame dot describe and this gives you a brief description of the metrics in your data or the measurable values here would be units the so number of units and the cost to get, a, to get an idea of the columns and the column type, you can say Excel data dot info. Okay, now you can see what columns they are. They're non-null counts. And then the types as well. So object is strings, integer and float are numbers, and then date time is date. Now, if we wanna extract a column, we'll just have a look at a column. We put in the table name or the data frame name we introduce square brackets, quotation marks, and the name. So for instance, let's have a look at units. And let's select that and let's run that. Now Python will just extract and show us the Excel data units column. And if we do something like plus two, what Python will do is add plus two to each of these values. So let's run that. Okay, and then you can see it, it now added two to each of the values. Likewise, maybe you want to create a column called profit and profit in our Excel table is 20% of the unit cost. How would we do that? So let's create a profit variable. So say profit is equal to Excel data. I'm going to say unit cost. And all we're going to say is time 0 0.2. And if we run that, okay, you can see in your variable explorer, profit comes up. And you can see it would be the unit cost times about 0 0.2. Now to add it back into our Excel data, so if we go to Excel data and we double click it, profit isn't there. So to add it back, all we have to do is say Excel data square brackets and whatever you want it to be called. So I'm going to say profit is equal to, let's say Excel data square brackets, unit cost times 0 0.2. And if you run that, let's check out Excel data. Okay, we can see profit is now added. You can also do something like Excel data profit is equal to our profit variable. And it will be exactly the same. All right. So one more thing that I want to do is what if we want to multiply columns? So if we go back to Excel data and I want to multiply units by unit cost to get the total cost. Okay. Cause this is unit cost. So it's a cost per unit and they bought 95 units. So to do that, we're going to create a column called Excel data. Let's call it total cost is equal to Excel data units multiply that by Excel data unit cost. Okay. And let's run that and let's check it out on our Excel data. Okay, and we see, there we go, our total cost field. 
All right, and now let's just do some graphs or some plots. So usually when you plot a graph, all you need to do is choose an x-axis and a y-axis. Okay, so if we choose something like order date and total cost, we should have a nice line graph, for instance. So let's do that. So to plot a graph, like I said, let's just comment, plot a graph. We need an x-axis. So let's say our x-axis is equal to, and I'm just going to copy this, but instead of total cost, we're going to say order date. Let's just make sure that the spelling is correct. Yeah. So the columns need to be exactly like how it's reflected in our Excel data table. And our Y is equal to Excel data total cost. And then to plot, we actually need to introduce another library or package, which is called matplotlib. So we're going to say import matplotlib dot pyplot as plt. Okay, this is the most common way to plot, um, and it's just a specific package name. So let's just run it to import it. If this gives you an error here, you can just do a pip install matplotlib. So let's do a plot. So to do a plot, all we need to do is plt. We're saying plt. So this is our package. And from the package, we're using the function plot. Open brackets, and we're going to say x, which is our x-axis, and y. So make sure you are in your Python tutorial folder, and then just select everything and click run. All right, so plots appear in the plot pane. Here we go. That's our plot. Now, the labels in the axis are overlapping. So let's do a rotation. So I want to rotate the labels 90 degrees. So to do that, we can say plot.xtix. And we're going to say rotation is equal to 90. And let's just run these last two lines. All right, and some quick formatting to do. So if you want labels, so we say plt.xlabel. And our x label will be order date. Okay, and then maybe you want a plt.y label. And our y label will be total cost. And let's do a title, so plt.title. And that will be, our title will be called total cost by date. And now let's just run these last few lines together. Right, and now you can see we have a title and the two labels. There we go, that's a simple script. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this helps you in your coding journey and you did learn how to code, even if it's just a little bit. Please let me know how it went in the comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe, it means a lot. I'll see you next time.